Drake has won the heat. <laughs> that was spicy! Welcome to a very special episode of Surfing Australia TV, presented by Woolworths. Today we take you on a trip with the Woolworths Australian Junior Surfing Team as they embark on a journey from grassroots competition all the way to the Vizsla ISA World Junior Surfing Championships in the USA. The ISA World Junior Surfing Championships have been running for 10 years and in that time Team Australia has had great results. With legends including Tyler Wright, Nicky Van Dyke and Connor O'Leary representing Australia in the event. With surfing's inclusion in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, winning an ISA gold medal not only for yourself, but for your country is a big deal. Last year, Grace and Henriks had an amazing campaign, taking out gold in the under 16 boys division, helping push Team Australia into the bronze medal position. I've been thinking about the world title all year and it's why I'm here, it's what I'm searching for. It would mean everything to me to win that gold medal. If I was to take out the ISA World Junior Championships, I couldn't even describe how I'd feel. I'd be honoured, happy to take it out for Australia as well and bring home the gold. Going over to Huntington and winning the, like, the event for under 18 girls would be a huge achievement for myself as well as doing it for Australia. I would be so happy for it to be a, a possibility. Before we head over to the USA, let's take a journey down to South Australia where qualifying took place at the Surf, Dive and Ski Australian Junior Surfing Titles. After being selected in their respective state squads, the athletes must then finish in the top three of the Australian Junior Surfing Titles to make it onto the Woolworths Australian Junior Surfing Team. With past winners including world champions Steph Gilmore, Mick Fanning, Joel Parkinson and Tyler Wright, a win in the junior surfing titles is a legitimate stepping stone to world stage glory. The Vaughan brothers, Joel and Huey, take out the under 14 and under 16 titles. Yeah, it was pretty special, especially because my brother took out the under 14s in the same day and there was so much going on and it was so much fun. Now the Woolworths Australian junior surfing team has taken shape, Coaches Kate Wilkins and Mike McAuliffe put the squad through an extensive two-day training camp at the Surfing Australia High Performance Centre. The state-of-the-art HPC is an official Australian Institute of Sport and New South Wales Institute of Sport training facility and houses a world-class gymnasium including surf-specific training equipment, a series of surf skate ramps with giant airbags, Olympic trampolines with foam pits specifically designed for practicing aerial maneuvers, and last but not least, world-class high-performance coaching staff. The goal of the camp is really just to bring all the kids together, have the team unite, you know, build a bit of trust, get to know each other, and also to set the scene that we wanted them to build their campaign, building their values, building the team culture as a team, um, and then leading that. We're going to try and emulate what it's like to be at an ISA event, run some rounds that'll be similar. And the main objective of that is just to, to see how you prepare so we can observe, like Mike's saying, just sit back and watch how you observe, how you, um, you're dealing with the structure of the heat. So what we're doing, basically, down here running heat drills, we've got two podiums set up, similar to what they'll have at the ISA Worlds, podium one and podium two. Last year was great, we came third, we got the bronze medal, but we're looking at wanting to better that and get the gold this year. So yeah, there's a couple of little things we'll do um, just to add in an extra support for the kids in getting there a little bit earlier, um, get them exposed to that environment and get them settled a little bit earlier than we did last year and hopefully that'll give us the, the extra edge. The team's pumped and ready to go. They now make their journey across the Pacific Ocean to the palm line shores of America. After the break, we follow Team Australia's preparation in California. Thursday, day two, two to three foot, glassy high tide. And it's been a really good morning for the surfers to get used to their smaller boards because it's pretty soft and we're just trying to work out the different peaks and just trying to keep their turns nice and tight in the pocket. Yeah, pretty happy with their 
their first little training session at Huntington. We've moved down to Podium 2. Uh, a few of the surfers are just getting used to this bank. It's a little bit different to down near the pier. It's usually the rapid charge bank, but it can also be the main break. So it's yeah important to get to know both of the banks uh, and just get familiar with the lineup spots. Everyone's looking great. It's I think you know they've just got such great attitudes and everyone's working really hard. Whether it's on their board choice or whether it's just getting to know the break, uh, everyone's putting in a lot of effort and it's showing. Like there's lots of great gains from every session. California's Huntington Beach is known for its long 15.3 kilometre stretch of sandy beach, mild climate, excellent surfing and of course beach culture. It's the site for the World Surfing Championships held annually in the US summer. It's often called the surfing capital of the world, not only for the height of the waves but rather for the consistency of quality surf. Huntington Beach is so special because we have waves, whether it's a north swell or a south swell, and we have a public that loves it. My first thoughts of America were a lot better than I expected. It's just like out of the movies, like watching Baywatch and stuff, the landscape, the scenery and all that, the palm trees, the icon of California is pretty sick. Before I came here, everyone was like, yeah, it's pretty fun, but I didn't realise how good it was going to be. The food's really good, the waves have been kind of pumping the whole event, so it's been sick to hang around and spend time with the team and other people from other countries as well, so it's been awesome. Before competition gets underway, Team Australia kit up in green and gold for the opening ceremony. The opening ceremony was crazy, the atmosphere was hectic. The opening ceremony was so sick, um, there were so many countries there, you can just see the diversity and there's so many people that surf all around the world. It just makes me feel like a true blue Aussie. <laughs> Mate, it's amazing, me and Skippy out here marching the streets, representing Oz, it feels awesome, mate. It's such an honour to go up there and, um, yeah, wave the flag amongst all those people and, yeah, be a part of such an amazing team and just to captain it has been amazing. With the fanfare over and preparation done and dusted, it's time for the surfing to begin. Today will be the uh, opening day of competition and we're going to get underway with, uh, well, the under-18 division. Lennox Head's Nixie Ryan is the first Aussie to hit the lineup in the under 18 girls division. Ryan gets Team Australia off to the perfect start, smashing her heat and firing up her teammates on the beach. Super happy to get through that first heat and get a few fun waves and get my feet in the wax. Yeah, when we were going well, it was so sick. Everyone was just high five and screaming. After round one, Team Australia was on fire, everyone was making heats. Like Joel Bourne was out there dropping two eights a heat and we were feeling super confident. My round one heat was a 15 minute heat and it was super tricky, like the conditions weren't amazing but I still got a couple waves and had a bit of fun. After round one, you know, just the atmosphere within the team was really high, everyone's morale was up. And I think just to get those first heat nerves out of the road just made everyone take a deep breath and go, you know what, we've done the work, we're all prepared really well. Um, let's just back ourselves and back ourselves as a team and an individual. Under 16, Aussie boys Zeb Stokes and Mike Layden Brown are pitted against each other in round three. In round three, me and Mike, my roommate, we had a heat together, up in the unit, warming up together, and didn't really want to like get in the way of his warm up. I was like, kind of trying to siphon me out of it. So we got we've got our two Aussies in this next heat, Zeb and Mikey. When you got two of your teammates in the heat, you know, once they put the jersey on, they're, they're individuals, so they've both got their individual kind of preparation and strategy, and that's sort of mostly the focus rather than than worrying about, you know, what each other's doing. Zeb Stokes, love the name out of the, for the Australian in white. Mike Clayton Brown of Australian yellow. So we got a good international one right here. Australia, Australia starting things up. Uh, MCB right there, looking good. Yeah, we both got off to like early starts and like it wasn't a super high screen heat, but um, yeah, we surfed well, I guess. So congratulations, MCB, Mike Clayton Brown, taking the win there, Zeb Stokes, in that number two spot. Getting the 
first ring of fire from Team Oz was like pretty special and like sharing it with my mate Mike, that was just sick. You gotta like what you did out there first off, but not only did you advance, of course, Zeb Stokes also from Australia, two of you advancing out of the heat, how does that feel? Yeah, it's so stoked. Um, yeah, I mean, to get the two countrymen through, it's just amazing. With a team riding a high after the two boys both progressed to round four, the journey continues after the break when we get to know some of Team Australia a little better. Welcome back to Surfing Australia TV. For Team Australia's athletes, the road to the Visla ISA World Junior Surfing Championships started back in Australia from an early age. Surfing Australia's elite pathway program provides the perfect competitive sporting ground from the age of eight in the Woolworth Surfer Groms Comps through to the elite Hydrolite Sports Surf Series for under 18 boys and girls, sanctioned by the World Surf League. Nixie Ryan was chosen as a wild card for the team. Uh, she was unable to compete at the Australian titles due to an injury, but she was chosen on her um, impressive results in the Pro Junior for that year. She um, you know, has followed the pathway for uh, the events within Surfing Australia's um, event schedule and also the WSL uh, Pro Juniors. So she's had a lot of competitive experience and definitely ready to, to hit the international stage and do the ISAs. Nixie faces off with two gold medalists, Daniela Rosas from Peru, who's provisionally qualified for the 2020 Olympics, and Minami Nonaka from Japan, who took out the event last year. Ryan finds two quick waves to get the heat off to a good start. Looks like uh, this is Nixie Ryan through the inside section. Yeah, about to close down her wave from number one. Nixie Ryan flowing nicely on the outside. Uh, I like the two-for-one bonus she gets at the end, yeah, Jones. Yeah, boom, right into the pocket and then that close out. So that's going to be a big score. I believe judges are going to really like that. She then locks in second place behind the reigning world champion with an even better wave, locking down a 6.5 ride. And she's right in line for this right-hander rolling through next to the pier. Here goes the Australian. Honda skills at Lennox Head. Snaps a nice front side turn, extends the shoulders around for a front side wrap, and now the punctuation. Is it coming on the inside? Yes, it is. But she just can't hold on to the right out, so that's going to be crucial in terms of the scoreline. After two excellent turns on her forehand, she's awarded a five point ride, putting her in the lead. It's uh, officially calling this heat closed, and it will be a great win there for Nixie Ryan from Australia over Minami Nanaka. The heat win keeps Nixie in the main drawer of the event and on target for that gold medal opportunity. Every team needs strong leadership. In other words, good team captains. Michael Margeson and Holly Williams have the honour of leading the group at this year's event. Last year, Micah put on a clinical display of the Surf, Dive and Ski Australian Junior Surfing titles in South Australia, winning the under-18 boys title. He now hopes to carry that winning form all the way to an ISA gold medal. I'm Micah Margeson, 18 years old and from Cabarita Beach, New South Wales, Australia. Cabarita is a pretty uh, quiet town. It's some pretty good waves. It's a little milk and cranny just down from the Gold Coast a bit, so it's not too busy. All my mates at school, kind of, they were all surfing, and I was like, oh, be cool to fit in and do a bit of that. And um, yeah, kind of just tagged along with all my mates and yeah, ended up surfing with them. Definitely like the top guys, Mick Fanning and Parko when they were on tour, that was such an inspiration and all that, especially like just living up the road. Take out the ISA World Junior surfing tiles would be pretty amazing with like all good people around and um, yeah, it's such an iconic location. It'd be pretty sick, yeah, frothing. Micah faces tricky conditions with strong onshore winds and a lumpy swell. Micah Marguson from Australia in the red signet. The competitor in white gets a quick start just after the siren, but only manages to squeeze in a single turn. Micah gets his first wave, left-hander, but only produces limited scoring opportunity. 
Micah's competition hassle for a smaller inside wave, leaving the door wide open for the young Cabarita local to snatch a quality right-hander. Micah getting a really good wave here. Um, just tons of speed through his turns, maintaining that flow onto the inside, getting that last crack. He nails the way, posting a six-point ride, putting him into the lead. He's found a nice little left-hand runner now coming down towards the pier. Squares off the bottom, aggressive surfing here as he tries to really manufacture some speed. And a nice flow there from Marguson as that wave uh, changes direction for him. 493, he locks in for that one, so it will be a convincing win here for the Australian. Yeah, just got through my first head, pretty frothing. Riding like a replica of what I won the Aussie titles on in an epoxy. Went sick out there, frothing, and stoked to get through. North Shelley Beach surfer Joel Vaughan is Australia's highest seed in the under-16 boys division, having taken out Billabong's Oki Grom Stomp and the Surf Dive and Ski Australian Junior Surfing title. He's made a name for himself, even in senior surfing ranks, after helping his club to a finals appearance at the Nudie Australian Board Riders Battle Series. The introduction of Joel Vaughan to the surfing world has happened and he has been on an absolute tear all weekend long. This kid has got a huge future. Just went out and had fun and tried to get a couple. This year, Joel's focus is firmly on bringing home a gold medal from Huntington. Joel kicks off his heat with a quick closeout re-entry and backs it up with a solid nine-point ride. Out of the darkness and into the fire. With his electric surfing perfectly suited to the conditions, he gets out to an early pace his competitors are unable to match, resulting in another win for Team Australia. Up until this point, it's been happy days for Team Australia. After the break, things get stormy as members face the dreaded rapid charge rounds. Welcome back to Surfing Australia TV. After a strong campaign for the Aussies, cracks begin to form as the rapid charge rounds start to take their toll. Yeah, the whole Australian team is killing it, but then we just got the first taste of what the rapid charge round is all about and how hectic it gets. There was a couple of results where the crew ended up into the rapid charges and there's a lot of additional stresses and unfortunately one of the days in the rapid charge rounds we lost quite a, a lot of our surfers and it was a hard, hard um, hit for the team. Getting knocked out is just super heavy, you know, you've prepared for this comp pretty much all year. It's the biggest comp I've ever been in and to get knocked just due to like lack of waves and not even your performance is just really heavy. With three Aussies remaining in the draw, we follow Holly Williams on her quest for gold. I'm Holly Williams, I'm 17 and I'm from Sunshine Coast, Queensland. Winning the, like, the event for under 18 girls would be a huge achievement for myself as well as doing it for Australia. I would be so happy for it to be a, a possibility. In the preparation leading up to the event, Holly runs into a problem no one would have imagined. Me, Micah and Joel just casually walking out and we're talking about stingrays. And then next minute, Joel's like, I'm jumping on my board. Micah jumps on his board. Right as I go to jump on my board, I step on a stingray. The pain was just like nothing I've ever felt before. I never want to experience that pain again. Comparing a blue bottle and a stingray, it would be like a blue bottle hitting you right in the glands, but times like three. That pain. I mean, I'm getting PTSD right now. I'm feeling good. The swell's good today. Got a hard heat, but I'm feeling confident. We started with 342 surfers eight days ago. We're down to the final 32. Welcome to finals day in Huntington Beach, the 2019 Vistula ISA World Junior Surfing Championship. We're set for a big finals day. We're gonna be handing out gold medals. Williams starts with a decent ride on her backhand, but can't back it up with another score. 
resulting in elimination from the main draw. Nixie Ryan is the second surfer remaining for the Aussies. However, like her fellow competitor, she also fails to get the score she needs to advance. It leaves just Elia Smith from the Sunshine Coast as the only one able to bring gold home for Australia. Elia unable to find a 4.33 in the dying seconds of the heat, unfortunately becomes the third Aussie in a row to be eliminated, compounding what has already been a bad day for the team. Hard one, hard loss. That was a tricky one, it's done so well. Big event, very proud of her. <laughs> very, very proud of Aaliyah, the whole team is. Done a great job for us. Australia just brings something so unique to the ISAs in, I think, our camaraderie and also just our energy. You know, we had a great team of four of us uh, as support staff for Australia, Team Australia. I think in going in future years, it would be great if we can, you know, expand that support network, um, be able to bring more individual coaches over. But overall, I think what, what Team Australia has is definitely we have the talent. We have such a, a big depth of talent coming through Australia and we're definitely a force to be reckoned with. Thanks for joining us on this special episode of Surfing Australia TV, presented by Woolworths Feeding Fresh Talent. For any more information on everything that you've seen today, you can head to surfingaustralia.com or you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'm Sam Squires. We'll see you next time.